Hi everyone and welcome to the Azam Sharp channel and this is the Learning Cocos 2D part number 3 and in this we are going to learn about actions okay um, let me actually delete this part of code so actions are basically will allow your sprites uh, or anything that drives from the CC node to perform some sort of a cool effect like it can move your sprite from one location to the other location it can also rotate your sprite it can repeat your uh, sprite it's it, it it has different functions okay uh, let me go ahead and remove some of the comments over here because uh, I know the comments are making uh, you know too many too many lines I guess here to read right so let me remove that if you haven't watched part number one and part number two, then I highly recommend that you do so because we are building this part number three on the previous parts. So if I run this application right now, let's go ahead and do that. You will see an iPhone simulator popping up and then the background will be set up as the default.png, okay? Which is basically like a Coco's background. We can even remove that. It's not really uh, so. Here's the background. Okay, it doesn't really serve any purpose for this particular video. So let's go ahead and remove that. I'm just going to say, okay, I don't really need a background. So let's comment that out. And uh, let's go ahead and add a sprite. Okay, so I'm just going to say CC sprite. And uh, I have already added a a bird, which this this will serve as our sprite. So I've already added that, and we are going to use that in our example. Okay, so I'm just going to say, okay, this is called like a bird, and CC sprite sprite with a file, because we are creating our sprite based on a PNG. So we'll give it that, and we can also set up the position where we want to display. I'm just gonna say 100 comma 100 and then self add child bird. So we are just adding the bird to you know our hierarchy into our layer. So here we go. So we have the bird added over here as you can see uh, it appears on our iPhone simulator. It really doesn't do anything as of yet. Okay, it's just static, it's just standing there. All right. One of the other things that is really interesting is that we're using hard coded coordinate system over here. We're saying that hey, put the bird at 100, 100. Okay, let me go ahead and say, okay, let's say uh, iPad, let's run this application on an iPad simulator and see how it will look on an iPad. Even with the 2x, I guess. There we go. Actually, it kind of looks similar, I guess, right? Um, so if you set up your application, if you go ahead and set up your application um, to run on iPad, okay? Let me see where that option is. iPhone. Uh, there we go. So it says iPhone. So let's run this on the iPad and let's start the app now so that it, it becomes a native app, app for the iPad. And here, here it is. And you can see that the 100 comma 100 for the I, from the iPad point of view is different from the iPhone point of view. Okay. So it's, uh, the, it's not really a good idea to hard code your coordinate system. Okay, let's go ahead and say iPhone and iPad. And let's select our iPhone and let's run this. So it's not really a good idea to hard code your coordinate system because if you hard code it, it might appear different. It, it will actually appear different on your iPhone or when it is running uh, on an iPad, it will be completely different. Okay, so for Cocos 2D, it's easy to do that. It's easy because there is a class over here, say CG size, and say window size, and CC director, share director. Share means that it's uh, like a one instance singleton, okay? 
and it's called win size. So this will give us the window size of the current running device. And using that, we can say window size, uh, you know, dot width. Hmm, that's kind of weird. Let's see. Okay, let's see what says going on over here. Unused variable, okay. So window size dot x should be width actually divided by two. Not really sure why it's not popping up. One of the things that uh, problems with the X code, I guess. So here we go. So whatever the width is, now window size will know that if you're if this is running on an iPhone or an iPad, and then you can actually you know just divide it by two and get the center position. Here we go. So currently our, uh, what is it, the bird doesn't really do anything. So let's go ahead and uh, perform any actions on it. Okay, it's really simple to do that. All you need to do is you need to say bird run action and you can say any action which is like CC action. Okay, and there are many different actions. CC uh, move to and then you have action with duration. This is uh, one of the parameters. So action with duration means how much time it will take to complete the whole action. Just going to say, okay, 2.0. And where would it end up? Now I'm going to use over here, kind of like a hard-coded thing. Okay, because this is just an example. So let's run this now. And you can see it's moving from point A to point B very slowly because it has to move from point A to point B in uh, two seconds. Okay, if I say okay over here 0 0.9, then it will be much more. The transition will be much quicker. There we go. Okay. Uh, CC move to is not the only action available. There are a bunch of other actions. Uh, let's say if you want to do CC. Uh, start over here bird run action and what is the action the CC move by or rotate by basically so here we go rotate by and uh, again how much time it will take it will take two seconds and it will do the whole 360 degrees turn so here we go it kind of like you know rotates So sometimes what you need to do is uh, you need to provide an action. You need to do some uh, two or three actions uh, simultaneously. You can use the CC spawn class to do that. But there's another class which is very interesting and it's called the CC sequence. The CC sequence, one of the good things about CC sequence class is that after the action has been performed, after all the actions that you have listed have been performed, it will uh, fire a callback okay and uh, it's very useful because in many games that you will develop you will need to kind of know that when your action has been completed okay so let's uh, go ahead and do that I'm just gonna say move to action CC move to and uh, action with duration let's say 0 0.9 uh, position let's say move to uh, 200 comma 200 so I'm just moving these values into an ID field uh, this is rotate to okay or rotate by action so I'm just going to say rotate by and uh, 0 0.9 and then angle is 360 and then this is the kind of like a callback which is a CC call uh, func n, n func. Okay, so there are two of them. So I'm just going to use, uh, in this case, let's see. Uh, so the difference between CC call func and CC call func n is that you can, uh, you can pass the element, actually, that's, uh, that is being on, on which the callback is being performed. Okay, so if I say uh, CC call func, let's see what action parameters are there. Action with target, 
okay and then the selector so the target is the same and for selector we can say over here selector and then the name of the selector that you want to fire so uh, I'm just gonna say animation uh, finished okay so there is no selector but right now animation finish so let's go ahead and do that let's create that particular thing uh, animation underscore uh, finished and it takes I think a parameter or something let's see So it's a void function animation finished and it's going to call uh, this particular function when it's done uh, now if I want to run the function okay so uh, it's going to say over here I'm just going to say bird run action CC sequence and then you have uh, actions okay so in this case uh, I can actually provide the list of actions which is a uh, move to then rotate by and then the callback and then the last parameter is just uh, nil let's run that uh, kind of wondering why this is a uh, still faded out I let's see oops maybe it does need some parameter or something let's see if it crashes or not it might need some parameter or something when it gets called okay so it kind of rotates uh, NS log and I'm going to say animation uh, finished alright and let's run this again so here uh, oh I don't think you can see that uh, let me hmm okay here we go so here we go animation finished so it does actually fire and this is a good thing because now you can go into your function which is animation finish and you can do some you know cleanup work or you can depending on your logic of your game you can do multiple things all right so that is pretty much it uh, so in this uh, video you learn how to use actions to move your sprites on the screen you also learn how you can use CC sequence to call multiple actions and finally to call a callback function which uh, you know which, where you can actually access the uh, the game itself and then uh, change the properties of the object or do anything you like so that's pretty much it uh, in the next tutorial we'll also kind of like dig more deeper into actions and learn uh, what other cool things we can do with actions I hope you like this uh, thank the video and thank you very much